It is an absolute scam. Not with me, but these groups and organizations that have harassed me for nine years since 2015. So every bit of information I've given is actually, it's the correct, it's accurate. Um, and this is where I've had people who don't know me, they don't know part of me. So basically, hair fracture in my life, that's where the information's been gathered from. So <clears throat> gathering and spreading false information from unreliable sources is what it is. Now, um, oh, even as because I'm, I'm looking at the um, more and more grey coming from, I've cut out the grey and it's still flicking there. Um, <clears throat> Even through my hair colouring and so forth. Yep, my hair is naturally dark brown new black. My pubes are naturally black. Um, what's the big deal about that? So let's put that pin down. I have no idea. No, don't even know why that's been brought up. Probably some sick twisted minds of people because I used to be blonde as a baby. Um, which is not unusual. I was a blonde baby. So um, to where we grew up and how I grew up and the um, effort the ethnicity I grew up to the um, style I grew up to a lifestyle and everything has been put on a spotlight since 2015 it's insane because what I said was the truth so some people thought we were brought up poor other people thought we were brought up rich and it's like I never said any of this um, but I'll say this I wasn't brought up the way my stepfather's family my stepfather's family is the Rackleys and I'm definitely not brought up like my mother's sister's children um, or my dad's sister's children okay we were brought up differently and i'm going to make this perfectly clear because even immigration got it wrong uh just because you're related doesn't mean you're brought up with the same um traditions the same lifestyle the same lifestyle choices the same uh, experiences uh doesn't even mean you're the same religion because i'm a different religion to my cousins i'm a different religion to my cousins through my mum's side and my dad's side um, and that's how we were brought up. So my mum's parents are Roman Catholics. They are, um, their parents are Roman Catholics. Their grandparents are Roman Catholics. Their great-grandparents are Roman Catholics. I'm brought up Roman Catholic. Other cousins aren't. Okay? It's that simple. I'm brought up in private schools. My cousins are brought up in public schools. There's a di massive, huge difference. Um, as for, for my mum crying poor and going on with... And she's done this with my grandparents for a life. So um, Lola May and Reginald George Purdy, my mum's parents... My mother used to do this when they were alive and say, oh, we're only ever brought up working class. And my nan said, no, we won't, Carol. We're, brought up, we're middle class. No working class. No working class family owns horses, is what my nan used to say. Basically, nip that in the bud straight away because it was instantly working class people. Your father had a trade, is what my nan used to say. So my grandfather, her husband, Reg, had a trade. That doesn't make us, we're not working class. Working class people is what you see at the working at the grocery store, is what my name used to say. Working class people don't have a trade. Your father had a trade, I have a trade, Carol, which is what my name used to say. So my name was a bookkeeper. My name gave up her job. So it, what my name did is exactly what um, accountants do today. Nan worked in Glebe. She gave up her job to raise a family, to stay home and raise the kids. While her husband kept up his job, which was a, a he was a butcher by trade. Um, so there were you know, two incomes that coming in before the kids. Um, Nan said like, you know, even when they were married, it was still, she said, I was still a clerk when we got married. I was still working. You, Nan always goes, your father, meaning your, your pop, your grandfather, my Reg, was working. So my Nan would shut it down straight away because Nan used to get so upset about this. And this has all got to do with the fact that my grandparents moved to Blacktown in 1962. But as my both of my grandparents said, Justin, you were somebody if you moved to the suburbs in the 60s. There's a massive big difference to, to like today, meaning even 20 years ago, when my name used to say this, um, to what it was in the 60s. We moved to a new subdivision area in the 60s and we were somebody. That all changed. And it did change. It changed due with immigration. It changed during the 90s. It changed quite a lot it changed when sydney got the olympics and they cleaned up inner city suburbs of sydney and made it more gentrified it changed but the city was the slums and that's the thing the city was always the slums and my name was like it was amazing we were the second owners of, second owners of a brand new house the guy that lived there before us was only there a year nan said we purchased the place in 1962 
They were staying in Madawi to save the deposit, but they went from Roselle to Madawi. Um, Nana always told me the house in Madawi was um, her brother-in-law's place, which was Raymond Senior, uh, Raymond Purdy, which is Pop, Reginald George Purdy's brother's place. He lives in King's Cross. I think he died in King's Cross. He actually died, I was always told he died at the age of 41, but he died in his 30s. I've got his death certificate. Actually, Nan gave me, like I say, growing up, I grew up with my grandparents, and Nan used to give me all the documents. I used to just photocopy them but, and give them back to her because Nan used to hand them to me and say, you know, you can have these before my daughters get their hands on them. And it wasn't just Nan that did that to me. Uncle Fred, which is his real name is Leo Patrick Say, which is my Nan's uncle, and my great-grandmother, which is Mary, which is um, Leo Patrick Sayer's sister, which is uh, Mary Sayer, but she married a Keegan, so become Keegan. She used to as well. So let's go back to this, because this has been brought up so much. Apparently, people thought that I was trying to be somebody I'm not. No. I've never denied where I'm from. So I'm born in Blacktown. Transferred to the RPA, you know, in the children's, well, um, Amanda, my twin sister, went to the children's hospital, but it was in Newtown. My um, pop, Reginald George Purdy, his mother was still living in Newtown at the time. Okay, all of my family is from the inner city suburbs of Sydney. I do have some family that are better off than others. Uh, my uncle Fred, which is Leo Patrick Sayer, he's from Bellevue Hill. So he was living in Bellevue Hill. He only moved to Leichhardt, but I knew him when he lived in Leichhardt, um, when he became an older man. He moved into the house that he owned, that his sister Mary raised her family, my nan Lola, in. This is really quite simple. So where I went to school, I didn't necessarily grow up in those areas. That's just where I went to school because that's where a parent was living. But I didn't really just grow up with my parents. And this is where I find a lot of people that have grown up in a very plebitarian lifestyle where they just have two parents and that's it. Don't understand this. Because I was better off having parents that divorced than I was having parents that were together. Man, I had a much brighter um, lifestyle and um, more, I was exposed to more, um, more affluent areas and so forth by having parents that divorced. So let me get back to the whole thing about born in Blacktown and raised in Blacktown. Um, because we actually had a horse start in Rudy Hill, Dunsmore Street. So in, even in the 80s, it was a very different area. I looked at it now, I was like, oh God, Jesus Christ, we're not living it. So different. But you're talking about in the 80s when it was, you had ice skating rings around near 3rd Avenue. Um, you had the stores, shopping malls, um, coffee shops. You had the Greeks with the, um, they had their little um, milk bars. You had the, the um, ones down the road on um, Rudy Hill Road that had the, um, what was it? Oh God, it's a I'm sure it was a, a dress. Adronicus, Adronicus Coffee. Um, you know, I went to a private school called St. Aidan's in Rudy Hill. We had a beautiful house with a swimming pool, landscape gardens and stables. Okay, and we had all this 10 minutes from Parramatta. And that's where the difference is. And that's where immigration doesn't get it. Because you say, like I say where I'm from now, and they look at it like it is now. I said, yeah, we had land 10 minutes from Parramatta. Different lifestyle. The, the way we grew up was very different. Like I said, I had a two-story cubby house, which was really 10 acres of retreat. We've run in water, power, and electricity. It was abundance. It was a beautiful lifestyle. You would not live there now. And that's the difference. There was a turnaround. There was an absolute turnaround in how things were done. Um, the Sydney Olympics changed a, a lot as well. So I've never denied where I'm from. But then I've also said, okay, so my snobbiness does come from Big Nan and Uncle Fred. They both spoke with a plum in their mouth. And that's what my Nana Lola used to call it. Because when I used to bring up their accent, and it was a British accent. So Uncle Fred spoke with a, a very strong, snobby plum in his mouth. He would, he, one of his phrases would always say, cheerio. Cheerio. It was very posh, very posh, very snobby. That was my great uncle who I was very close to growing up. Leo Patrick Sayer. His brother is Matthew John Sayer, who has to call Uncle Jack or Auntie Jack is what my mum's cousin, which was Sharon Newcomb said. Um, Sharon Newcomb and Chip Newcomb remembers the house that my nan's cousin Gary Williams grew up in, which is in Bellevue Hill, which is where my nan used to go to visit her grandmother and her grandmother's sister, which is Annie Williams. My nan's grandmother is Julia Sayer. Um, their mother is Bridget Dufresne. Like I said, my nan's great grandmother is French. My nan's great grandmother is French. My nan's great grandma, great grandfather is Irish. My nan's great Sorry, my nan's great grandmother is French. My nan's great grandfather is Irish. My nan's grandmother is French and Irish. My nan's grandfather is English. Okay, 
So the sale. And it's really not. So every statement I've said is the truth. Now, yes, my mother did move in April 1989 to Tenworth. That's true. But we didn't have family from there. And I went to a private school in the area and I only lived there for barely six years, but I was spending my time in Sydney the entire time. Now, as for the Sydney, the city influence, my mother worked as a paralegal when I was growing up in Sydney. My dad, my dad was a builder. So my dad's the first husband, Mark Ian Fleming. He's a builder. Mum's a paralegal. Every statement I've said is the truth. Everything. Mum's closest friend back in those days, I don't have anything in common with my mum these days because back when I was growing up in the 80s, we grew up in an extremely 80s lifestyle. Um, 80s, like full on 80s funk clothing. I was going to under 18s discos as a seven year old when I had all these designer suits, shirts, Mummy Vice shirts, shoes, you name it. Ghetto God, I was covered in jewelry. That's how I grew up. Everything changed when my mother moved because we went to a different environment. My, my mother started to fit in to that environment. Okay, so how we grew up in Sydney to then where I moved to, but I really didn't change much because I was so Larry for the six years I was in this in area because I brought my Sydney suburban ghetto goal behavior with me. And I did. So here's the thing. Mum worked as a paralegal in the city. By the time she got home from the city to the suburbs, it was late. Ian Schulbach, mum's boss since she was 16. Diane Schulbach, mum's closest friend back in those days, and she should really remember that. Um, their son, um, Brendan Schulbach, the adopted one, I actually remember at his mum's funeral uh, back in October 2005. I went to their mother's funeral, Diane's funeral. Uh, they're from David Street, Clifton, uh, Clifton Gardens near Mossman. I remember that well because I remember going to the house a lot growing up. Like, mum in 2005 was driving around, couldn't remember what street it was in 2005 because she had planned to meet Diane. Um, Diane was in hospital that, at that time and she wasn't answering the phone, um, unbeknown to my mother. So, mum called me and said, Do you remember what street it was? I said, David Street. It was David Street in Clifton Gardens. Yeah, of course, I remember. I remember when um, Uncle I it was Uncle Ian, mum's boss. Ian Schulberg was like an uncle to us growing up. Um, when he li they lived at the backyard. They actually raised the backyard completely because he couldn't see it from the top floor. Um, people talk about my anger issues. I don't have anger issues. I yell and scream because I grew up around people that yelled and screamed to get what they want. Simple as that. My mother yells and screams to get what she wants. Ian Schulbach, her boss, yelled and screamed to get what he wants. I remember when he was going to court all the time for his... Well, Mum says it was an English Bull Terrier, but it wasn't. It was a Pitbull Terrier. I have an English Bull Terrier. Ian Schulbach had a Pitbull Terrier. Um, I remember the, the joke once when he had to go to court and the magistrate says, oh, you've put a, like spent a million dollars or two million dollars on a fence right around your property with electric gates and so forth. Um, is that to keep the dog in? And he said, no, it's to keep you out. That's what the people I was growing up around, racing people with loud mouths, filthy mouths type thing, like screaming and yelling and, you know, even um, in my own family. That's just how it is. That's how the people I grew up around. This is not anger. This is yelling and screaming because that's how people were and that's how people were in the city in those days because this is before a lot of sensitive people decided to come to Sydney. Okay. It's exactly that. It's just the, a cultural thing. It's cultural. It's not anger. Um, it's not anger. See, my stepfather's family have anger. So my mum's second husband, which is the Rackleys, my mum's first husband is the Flemings. The Rackleys have anger. The Rackleys also have suicide, depression, drugs and alcoholism and anger. That's no blood relation to me. They're only related through marriage because it's my mum's second husband's family. That's nothing to do with me. It's nothing picked up even from them. So, um, and I'll go back again when, um, with my mum talking about being working class. Um, even my nan said, so, you know, Carol, you went to, you had the best of everything. You had the best horses. Um, you had the best horse gear. You went to any show you wanted to go to. You went to ballroom dance, dancing lessons and you had t tennis lessons. Now, my mother was a good tennis player. She had tennis lessons. She had tennis lessons growing up. And she still walks around. We didn't have much growing up. We are working class. My nan it used to infuriate my nan because my nan's like, working class people are like the people that are down the road working in a checkout chick type thing. You went to tennis lessons, Carol. Working class people don't go to tennis lessons. You had horses. Working class people don't have horses. Wake up to yourself. My name used to get so offense because to her, it was, you know what? There's no pleasing your mother. There's no pleasing her. 
we went working class and she's there running around going, oh, we was, oh, so we're the victim, we're the victim. Oh, poor us, we're, you know, such Australian battlers, which, you know, used to be one thing on my dad's side they used to do. And that's what used to upset now. It's like, Justin, I had a trade. I gave my trade up because you could in those days, you know, I was a clerk. I gave it up. Like Nan said, I went to school to be a clerk. I went to finishing school. Pop used to call it, um, you know, Reg used to call it ladies college. Nan said it was finishing school. But I, you know, went to school, I got a job as a clerk. I gave that up to raise a family. Her husband, Reginald Purdy, my mum's father, was a butcher. That's a trade. She said, we had good income coming in. Your mum's just full of shit. What, we didn't, you know, she didn't have, what did, what did she miss out on? Yes, backstop. My dog just was giving me all, wants my attention. So there's that. Um, every single statement, including, I always call 43 Piper Street Leichhardt Nan's house. And my mother keeps putting her head up going, oh, it's Uncle Fred's house. I'm like, yep, Uncle Fred owned it. I'm not an idiot. I know, and Uncle Fred's Lara Patrick Sayer. We call him Uncle Fred. I'm not going to get into that. I was like, I'm not an idiot. I know Uncle Fred owned it. But his sister, my big nan, Mary, Maisie, um, raised her family in the house. Okay, raised my nan, Lola May, in that house. So Lola May Keegan, which her mother was a Sayer. So Mary, Say Mary Ann Sayer married, uh, what was that? Arthur, oh, he, has, he has a long name because he's got two middle names. Arthur something, you know, is it Arthur William Keegan? It's Arthur, I'll have it somewhere. I've got his birth certificate somewhere. I've got the marriage certificate somewhere. He's got two middle names. Is it Arthur James Williams, William Keegan, something like that, anyway, um, which is my mum's um, grandfather. My name's father. So they lived in Leichhardt, in Palmer Street, raised their family. Um, my nan lived her life out in that house, meaning my big nan, my great-grandmother. Um, and then her brother, when he got older, moved into the house that he owned. So I've always called it my nan's house, because that's where my nan's raised. Uncle Fred owned it. That's right, Leo owned it. Um, but he lives in Bellevue Hill. And he was living in Bellevue Hill even during the war. When, oh, sorry, he, when, he lived in London during the war, but he was back here at his house in Bellevue Hill. So he lived in uh, 33 Edgecliff Road, Bellevue Hill or Wallara, whichever suburb it comes up under. And that's true. And as for the Wallara address, um, even dad's grandfather moved to Wallara. So that's why they were married in Wallara. I don't have the address of where he was living, but I do know that he married Ada Gray, who's from Abbotsford. So my nan Ruby, um, this is my dad's side now, um, Ruby's mother um, and Ruby's father was married in Wallara. And Ruby's brother, which is Uncle George Hill, he told me that's where um, his father was from. They they moved from Dunedin, so not originally from, but uh, um, Uncle George's father, whom was his name, uh, Frank Edward Hill. Frank Edward Hill was born in Dunedin, moved from Dunedin to Wallara when he was a young man, and that's why he was married in Wallara. Um, his parents are from, like I said, like the descendants, I know all my descendants except for Dad's father. Um, the ethnic side comes from dad's father. Um, so they, so uh, Frank Edward Hill's parents are from Southampton and London. I never said anything different than that. And then when it comes to ethnicity, like when you look at my family on my dad's side, it's like, but they all look Lebanese or ethnic or Greek or Italian. It's like, yeah, I know, we keep saying this. I've told you people time and time again that Stanley Fleming, who is my pop, my um, grandfather, my dad's father, Mark Ian Fleming's father, Stanley Fleming, was an orphan. He wasn't adopted. He was raised by Edith Cavanaugh in Botany Bay. But as per Australian records, it even states on all the Australian records, there is no country of birth, there's no place of birth. It's unknown. It's unknown what country he came from. It's unknown where he was actually born. But what we do know, he was raised by Edith Cavanaugh in Botany Bay. That's it. I know what his brother-in-law, my great uncle told me. Um, and, you know, find the information to back it up. Well, you know, there's little. Um, although the government documents are there and the government doc I know my grandfather Stanley Fleming, mean, of course I do. I remember even when he passed. Um, so I know him growing up. There's um th th and that's the other thing. I, I grew up with a lot of older family members in my family. I wasn't with my mother, she worked full time and then had the horses. My twin sister was more with my mother. My parents divorced um around nineteen eighty five, not nineteen eighty on. 1985, would have been. Or well, separated in 1985, divorced in 1986, maybe. But they were married in 1977. I know all of my, my side of the family. 
there's no memory issues. There's none of this, oh, trying to be grand or something. It's like, no, I'm just stating a fact. I'm stating the fact that this is where my family's from, the inner city. They're indigenous to the inner city. Um, right, family members that were indigenous to Bellevue Hill, that were indigenous to Dremoyne, Abbotsford, Lycard, Balmain, Roselle, Botany. That's where they're indigenous from. There's no, you know, and as for the country, no one heard of Tamworth before 1989. And I, there is nothing, there's none of this trauma made up. So idiots started making these bullshit stories up in the last nine years that really pissed me off. Apparently I had trauma to do with Tamworth and I'm like, that makes no sense at all. Um, because no one heard of the place before 1989, I was nine. I was nine years of age when my stepfather, my mother's newly married husband that she married in 1988, um, brought it up about going there for a weekend holiday and they went there and the exact weekend they went there for a holiday, my mother bought a house there. She liked it and bought a house there and moved from Sydney. They moved in April 1989, so the week of my 10th birthday. That's the facts. And I really don't like nature. So it moves back home to Sydney. And when I was there, I was, barely there for the six years i was there considering we weren't from there and we had no family or friends there so all of the time was spent back home in sydney anyway um which is the truth and i used to go to work with pop at um which was pj boats and then became family boats for john smiles so good family friend in blacktown um i did used to work every year so I, all, all this crap with me was brought up to him like i've worked since a teenager i haven't stopped working so me having expensive designer labels and so forth and what I've had is not unusual considering it's also how I grew up, okay? We did have the best of everything. And I'm not going to feel like I'm obli you know, obligated to um, tie any of this down, which is what I've been feeling like in the last nine years that I have to, oh, you know, fit in with some leftist ideology and tying it down. It's like, no, I had, you know, really good horse gear, my beagle hat, my beagle hat just for riding horses with was about $300 in the 90s. You know, we had expensive horse gear, but again, mum was a paralegal. Um, dad was a builder. They divorced. Um, mum was still a paralegal. When they divorced, mum got the house and assets and everything in it, so she was set up. So anything that she owned after that, she already had the house. She already had the assets. Um, so she already owned everything. So her money just went to anything else. You know? Um... I'm not going to tone it down just to make people happy, make them feel comfortable, make government departments feel comfortable, even immigration. So why should I? The, like, if you want to say entitled, I think that's insane to say entitled. I like to bring up and say I had a different lifestyle to my cousins. My cousins were dragged up as plebitarians. We were a middle class lifestyle because of, you know, how we were raised, what job my mother had what job my father had. I think that's where a lot of people don't realise it. It comes down to, you know, what, you know, what what did they have? Where, what was their employment as well? And what did they do? Because my dad barely drank alcohol growing up. He's not a drinker. Dad used to drink wine as well. Um, he was very, just a classy man. He wasn't a big drinker. They're not drug users. So they don't, um, they weren't abusers of any substance abuse. Like, my stepfather's family was, and my mum's um, sister's family was, and my dad's sister's um, husband was. So there's another thing as well. Like, you look at this and go, well, you didn't, like, a cousin on my dad's side used to always say, oh, we're just Aussie battlers. I'm like, you get to a point where you've got to stop biting your tongue and go, your dad, who I'm not related to, it's the, um, you know, husband, or, you know, my, I'm related to her mother. Um, your dad was a drunk. So you're not Aussie battlers. Your dad's a drunk, which is why you were brought up with, you know, but it's the same cousin that used to um, have everything, every toy you could think of, like the Barbie um, dream house. And what do you want? No, you're not coming. Cheeky. You're not sitting on the chair with me. You, okay. My dog is so spoiled that he, when he wants to, <clears throat> I used to lift him up and he used to lay across my legs. No, I'm too sore. So the same cousin used to say Aussie battler, uh, you know, had the um, Barbie sort of um, camper van, all the accessories, and had every toy you could ever think of. Um, her dad was a drunk. It's like, well, you still own the house. Like, you still lived in a nice house near the beach. Like, it was modest. Like, it wasn't, you know, a nice house like we had. But, <laughs> you know, 
did you really, were you really an Aussie battler? No, your dad was just drunk. Like, that's what I want to say. Um, but yeah, like, so, no, it, it gets to a point where you, I sit back now, especially my older age, going, oh, I can't do this. Like, you, you can't just sit there and hear the same crap. Um, you know, from Baxter, no. Now I'm still listening on the bed. Oh, okay, no. He wants me to lift him down this little step. You can't get down the step. Can you, okay, no, can you, you can't get down the step. Come on. You can get down the step. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Come on, boy. You can do it. There you go. Oh, no. There you go. Do you, look at you did it. You did it. <laughs> you did it. Yes. You did it. Oh, God. Oh, and all because he slipped once. Now, every time he goes in the kitchen and he, uh, I'm getting off the subject, and he tries to come out, he looks at the step going, oh, it's like, it's a tiny step, Baxter. It's because he loves me. Um, so look, no, um, it's ridiculous. This has just gone too far. Um, every single statement I say is the truth. Um, again, like I said, I had different upbringings to my cousins. Our traditions, um, what we, our beliefs, completely different. Just because we're from the same family, which is, means whether it's my dad and my dad's sisters and their children, completely different upbringing, completely different traditions, completely different um, family traditions when it comes to food that we eat, completely different religion. When it comes to my mother and her sister and their children, completely different traditions, completely different upbringing, completely different belief system, completely different religion. And that's where it doesn't work when you look at some families that um, are all so exactly the same. It, it doesn't work. Um, where immigration, are, that people don't get it. It's like, okay, but people are different individuals. And, you know, you might have two siblings growing up together, but um, they may have different life experiences depending on, and that goes with me and my twin sister. My twin sister was more with my mother, where I was more with my great grandmother, my great uncle, my grandparents. You know? Um, as a, no, you're not coming in here. No, you're not coming in here. Here then, here. Here, here, just in the step. Just in the step. Oh, yeah. oh come here. Oh, you want to Yeah. Yeah, this dog thinks he's a lap dog. <laughs> I've got you, you want it? Here, yeah. I'm gonna end the video there because now this, yeah, you're gonna oh, hurt my knee. Um, so basically, this is what my dog really does. He honestly lays all over me, thinks he's so tiny. And <laughs> yeah, you happy now? Are you okay, can you see? Is it you happy? Now? Oh, oh yes, you little lap dog. <laughs> Was that you in the video? So yeah, um, <laughs> Baxter. Oh, you little cutie. Oh, you're happy now that you're sitting on my leg. It's all he wants. You can jump. What's that? There you go. Whoa. So yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Every single statement I've said, um, I don't care what other people say. I can back it up, and I can back everything up through documents. Instead of listening, like, instead of gaslighting me and not believing what I've said, I'm like, okay, why don't we just follow documents? For an example, I have what I have, but I've always worn things like really good um, Armani, Versace, Dolce Gabbana. Um, I can show you photos of me back in you know, the year 2001, traveling around America in January and February 2001, and I'm wearing shirts that I had back in the 90s. Um, I wore a beautiful Dodge Gabbana shirt back in 1986. I've always worn good quality designer labels. My mother's always had good labels for the horse riding, which is a question. Um, so good, like the, the brand gear that, you know, was either German gear, so German horse gear. So we always had the best horse gear and so forth. So I don't understand, like this seems to have all gone for immigration as well. I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. This is so, I've said the truth and I've backed it up. And I've had beautiful, expensive furniture in my life. But then when I brought my furniture and my statues and assets and belongings, I was on the salary. Actually, you've got to get down my knee, my knee. Oh, God. Cutie. Um, I was on really, like, good money. Um, and I've always worked. 
You know, like the, and all this also came from other organisations that were social workers and so forth and making up stories about me. Apparently I can't look after myself. So they wanted to come and help and look, it's been one lie after the other since 2015 and I've said the truth, backed it up. Like even me driving a BMW, it's like, yeah, but no one paid for this except for me. Having expensive ornaments, expensive like lamps that I ordered from New York, which I did. Uh, which is all gone now, um, expensive items. And they're like, well, how'd you pay for it? I'm like, well, I was on $47,730 a year as a salary package at Star Casino. Then I was working two side jobs after that and I was. I was doing, it won't next up. I was doing labouring on the side and I was doing maintenance on the side, but these weren't career jobs. These are just other jobs that you do. All these crap towards me because of what I had and it seems to be so leftist, communist, socialist. And I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm not going to put up with it. You've already cost me what I worked hard for to push your and narrative and agenda. So you've damaged everything I worked hard for. Oh, also, you've stopped me going back to Star Casino as a VIP host, which I really wanted to do. Um, yeah, I was mugged after work, that's right. I was mugged and robbed after work, but you made up the stories that I had um, mental issues towards the casino because I was mugged. That's insane. What has that got to do with the casino? I was mugged on my way home from work. How is that the casino's fault? And I've been saying this for years, since 2009, even when there was some wrong information spread. And I keep saying, but why do you believe I have issues towards the casino when it's nothing to do with the casino? There, it's not, they, how could they have prevented me from being mugged on my way home from work? The only way would have been to offer me a lift home like a higher car lift, because my car was in the workshop getting fixed. Instead, I took public transport and walked up Cleveland Street. So how, why would I then be angry towards my employer over this? I'm more angry with how I'm treated since I was mugged November 30th, 2007. Why would I be actually angry towards my employer themselves? And that's what I kept trying to raise this question up with mental health organizations that seem to be just wanting to keep me on the books to make money even though it was preventing me returning to work and for myself making money. So therefore they were financially disadvantaging me and I'm gonna leave it at that because that's what's just happened. Financially disadvantaging me. I could go on for hours on this subject where I would like to leave most of this for solicitors to actually say, okay, you're gonna help me for the last nine years and restore my credibility, verify what I've said, Stop treating me like some low-life scumbags I'm not. I've worked my ass off. I've just had all this damage, including the assets, belongings, and savings for a um, narrative and agenda to be pushed that isn't true. You've stopped my studies when I have studied art and design and I have passed art and design. I have worked in the, well, I've also won competitions in art, um, but I have also worked in design. Okay, whether I've gone through the books or not is beside the point. Okay, I've done what I said I've done. Okay, I've said what my family has done, which means my grandfather has owned racing horses and raced horses. He has raced pigeons as well. He is a butcher, he's also a jack of all trades. Um, my dad used to play baseball and go deep ski scuba diving. I grew up playing soccer and riding equestrian horses. My mother did play tennis growing up. Oh, she also went to ballroom dancing lessons, but she was a good tennis player and rode equestrian horses. All this is true. Dad's a builder, mum was a paralegal. Now she's with some weird organization doing caring. I think she's turned, well, not, I think she's turned weird. Yeah, she's been weird since she got with her second husband's family. Um, everything I have actually said, um, even in my resume, is facts and true, backs up with documents, yet I've been gaslighted for years, not just gaslighted, financially disadvantaged over the years. I was accused of being a drug dealer um, by actual people that are involved in drugs, which is just looking at me and going, you're insane because these people were looking at what I had and the only way they could work out how I could have what I had was I must be some criminal. Mm. Yeah, I'm not. Um, and I find it to be insane. I find their behavior to be insane and I look at them and think, but you're just a, a drug user. You're just a junkie. You're making, so whether, whether it's a alcohol junkie or a cannabis junkie, or even something worse, like ice junkie, whatever it is, you're still a junkie, or vape junkie, um, you're still just that type of character of a person. So, yeah. And as for myself having a green card to America, it wasn't therapy, it wasn't great home therapy. Who made up these stories?
I just applied for a green card like anyone else can apply for a green card. I didn't say, and this is where mental health said, here's what mental health said. Um, I believed I had a green card to America given special treatment because I believed I was rich. Never said that. I believed that I had the degrees to hold a green card to America where I turned around to him and said, anybody can apply for a green card to America as long as you got your high school certificate. You could be a barista making coffee and apply for a green card. That's the beauty about America. Anybody can apply for a green card to America. It doesn't mean you're going to get it, but anybody can apply. As for me having degrees, I did study design that you've mental health industries have now denied me of my studies and they've done it for nine years and this is where I'm sitting back going oh I can't work in any of my studies because you've told people that I've lied when I haven't you've made me out to be a character of mental health made me out to be a character of a person I'm not um denying the fact I was a VIP host denying the fact that I studied art and design and basically put me into this bullshit for nine years for what so they can make money because this is a massive big well, it's slander, it's defamation. Then it was, because I believed I was, I oh, love this, they said I believed I was from the French royal family. I'm like, where'd they get the informa information from? Mark Henna, who's a junkie? So you got information from an ice addict called Mark Henna, did you? Right, because I've always said, yes, that's right, my nan's, and I've said this, my nan's side has French. Because other people say, where you get this from? I'm like, well, dad's, my, my ethnic look, comes from dad's father but it could also come from the fact that nan's got french in her side which is what i've said then instantly i'm attacked i'm like why are you attacking me when nan's great grandmother is french bridget dufresne oh dufresne is this i'm like i don't care what dufresne is dufresne is my nan's great grandmother's last name before she was married okay and that's it that's it. So all that information, including the information I've just supplied here, was twisted by groups and organizations, and they've gathered information from junkies. Junkies. Like, even to the point where I've now got stuff to do with where my mother lives and where I went to high school, coming back again where people don't know me. So they think my last name's Rackley, and the same thing's coming up again, which happened years ago from 1989 until 1995, where I kept saying, I'm Fleming. My last name's not Rackley. Mum had two husbands. My, I'm Justin Fleming, not Justin Rackley. You keep saying Justin Rackley, and I keep correcting you and saying it's Justin Fleming. And then you've got smart ass wankers that go, oh, he wants to sound posh and rich. I'm like, by saying my name's Justin Fleming, my actual name, my birth name, Justin Mark Fleming, and my daddy's Mark Ian Fleming, and my pop, my dad's father, is Stanley Fleming. Because you think I'm related to mum's second husband, which is Mark Jeffrey Rackley, his father's Don Rackley. But you keep getting told the same thing continuously, but because you're country people, you're too stupid to understand or comprehend. That's where I went to high school at Lady Rosie College. That wasn't to everybody. That was to the wankers of people that I can't stand there. Because most people from the area, well not most, any single person in my entire life who knows me for any stage in my life, they don't know me as any other name except for Justin Mark Fleming. And yes, I do have a stage name or an artist name that I use, and I always use Sosime and other names that are affiliated with Latin versions of my name. And I'm not even going to get into that because this was to do with my upbringing in Roman Catholic. And this started with learning the Latin versions of my name back in 1984 when I started at St. Aidan's in Rudy Hill. Okay, better schooling teaches you more education. You know, oh, that was really bad English. More education. But still, yeah, I had good skilling. Yeah. Everything I've said is the truth. And I'm not backing down. My mother used that for her own little manipulative behaviour. I'm like I'm a sitting duck because I don't have my grandmother Lola to stand up and say well this is true and like I've said to people I said we'll just rely on documents then instead of taking my testimony every statement I make I can back it up with an actual document to prove what I'm saying is true so I will back things up with a document of proof to what I'm saying is true everything where I've lived here's the addresses um, the fact that I may like I used to put my um, car is to register my car at my mother's address or like insurance say that it's at her address um, yeah I did like every, but I wasn't living there 
Um, but here's the addresses I've lived at. This is where I'm born. Here's where I'm raised. Here I went to school. This is where my grandmother's from. This is where my grandfather's from. This is where my parents are from. This is where my mum's born. Um, you know, let's just rely on pure documents of proof because you don't want to believe me. Um, the fact that I learned French in high school, let's just um, look at the actual document of fact, which I've asked my old high school, which is no longer exists, but the high school that took it over because um, it moved to another location. Um, I've asked them for the list of the subjects when I was at the school there, um, and I've got that. So let's rely on that as evidence, okay? Let, you don't want to listen to me or believe me. Let's just rely on pure documents. Um, my nan's grandmother, Julia, died in the front bedroom at 43 Piper Street, Leichhardt, back in the 50s. Let's rely on her death record to show who her parents are. Bridget Dufresne and Matthew Joseph Ryan. Let's, let's look at that. Okay, let's rely on government documents to show where Leo Patrick Sayer, my great uncle's, um, his address was. 33 Edgecliff Road, um, or Lara, or, you know, um, Bellevue Hill, whichever it falls under. Some say Wallara, some say Bellevue Hill. Um, let's look at that. Okay, considering you want to keep gaslighting me, but on the extreme, um, which I've had from mental health organisations, the extreme which is extreme defamation of character, costing me everything I've worked hard for, um, denying me the truth of my studies. Well, I've done nothing with my studies now. And the thing is, and I'm still having mental health to stop me from doing anything in my design studies. I, I had like, I only had a break. I only had a break. That's it to go back and pick it up again. I studied design at TAFE College in 97. I started it in 2009, I started it in 2010. I studied art at TAFE College in 1996. I did design and, you know, design and other aspects and other courses, of course, through high school, but after high school, it's TAFE College. Now I can back up with documents what I've done. And I've had these organizations completely lie about me since 2015 denying me that truth. Um, so let's look at that. Uh, the fact that I'm, Apparently rich. I've never said I was rich, but I did have well over a hundred thousand in savings, and here's the reason why I had so much money. I do have did have expensive assets and belongings. Here's the reason why. So let's just rely on actual facts, not what these mental health, social, pathetic losers of people that make money from destroying someone's life like mine want to base their information from. How I grew up. Look at my mother's house. Look at where my dad lives. Look at the fact that. Um, where my grandparents lived, where they're from, how I initially grew up having horses and swimming pool, landscape gardens in Rudy Hill. Look at the facts. So that's it. Look at actual, you know, areas where I've lived around. Okay, I never said I was rich. That's one thing I've never said. But I didn't grow up working class, I grew up middle class. No working class people had the lifestyle that we had. And that's a fact. So I've never said anything other than the actual truth. No. Um, look at that. Um, the fact that Nan's grandmother, sorry, Nan's great grandmother, so Nan's grandmother's mother was French. Let's just look at the facts with that. You don't, like, you want to make up stories, oh, and turn that into being French royal family. Except for saying a joke that my Nana Lola used to say about Bridget um, when she came to Australia, because Nan knew she was French. She knew her great grandmother. Okay, except for that joke, um, that aside, that was said as a joke, um, Nan's great grandmother was French did come like that's why there's apparently there's no birth record of bridge or whatever but nan said no she's french justin her husband's irish okay so her great my nan's great grandmother was french and my nan's great grandfather was irish okay then that means nan's grandmother is french and irish and nan's grandmother married an englishman okay that makes nan's mother french irish and english descendant but that is all through documents. And here we have low life scumbags of people, um, junky people, mental health head fucks. Oh, and another thing as well. Um, and I'm going to make this the last thing um, when scummy people who involve themselves in my life, like my hairdresser. Um, yeah. So my dad's older sister had her DNA done. Now, Fleming, the last name, the surname. I know the heritage of the surname. So just so I can put this in perspective. And I know the heritage back in 2006 when Rob Van Erden, Rob Van Erden, Erden, who lived down the road from me on Cleveland Street, Surrey Hills, actually told me, because he said, your last name's Fleming. He said, can't be. So it is. 
he, uh, he's my ID. He goes, well, I know Fleming's like he was from um, Holland or whatever. I said, um, your name actually was a two-part name in history. And he got me the details of where it came from because Rob's name was a two-part name. He said, my name's, like, his name's Rob Van Erden. U R R U R D E N thing is, he said your name is was very similar to that, um, the Fleming. So he knew the history of the Fleming last name. I said, oh, I don't know because Dad's father's an orphan. I said, so that's the history of the name itself. So I've only brought up the history of the name itself. I've never ever once said that that is my father's father's history. I've never said it. What I've said was that's the history of the surname, but my dad's father's an orphan. However, the history of the surname is this, and it's a French spelling, um, an old name from, which used to be a two-part name, Von Fleming, which was from the area where, it's a Flemish name, um, uh, from the Flanders area where Belgium meets France. You find a lot in East Germany, he said. I've, that's, that, that was back in 2006. I'm in Cleveland Street 392. He was up the road with his boyfriend then, well, the guy he was living with anyway. Um, and the information I got regarding the history of the name came from him. That's where it started from. And I even said to him, I said, oh, I have no idea because Stanley Fleming, um, that's it. It's Stanley Fleming, I have like my pop and his son is my father, my father, Mark Ian Fleming, and that's it. So where um, Stanley Fleming's parents are, no idea he was raised by somebody else so that's all i said and apparently in the last nine years even though this has been said since 2006 in the last nine years all these organizations want to make something bigger so mental health want to turn this into something sinister and it's like but it's not sinister you're lying about me this is defamation this is defamation from groups and organizations and other people who only know so people who've passed through my life in the last 25 years who know nothing except for a little hair fracture of my actual life. That's it. And that's where you've gathered information from. I love when idiots gather information from some junkies. I'm like, yeah, your information is coming from a junkie that's blown something way out of proportion. Well done. But what I actually said was the truth. Everything I've said is the truth and I won't back down. I don't care how many people I've got to call on a weekly basis to get a solicitor to actually start listening to me and taking it from these organizations where they've twisted information to be sinister and start restoring my credibility and telling the truth about me. It's already cost me everything I've worked hard for. What do I have to lose? Seriously, you've backed me against the war and a man that's got nothing left to lose is a very dangerous man, I love that saying. But I'm not backing down. I'm right, you're wrong. You deliberately came after my life to attack the truth. So you've attacked the truth and you've twisted it to be sinister to push your own narrative and agenda. And that's exactly what these organizations have done.